Today we will be talking about fair value gaps. What are fair value gaps? How do you determine if they are valid? And how to find the right one to trade? This is episode 3 of the masterclass. If you haven't seen the other episodes already, there will be a link in the description. So first of all, for the people that are new to ICT concepts or are new to my channel, what are fair value gaps? Basically, a fair value gap is an imbalanced zone in the market and you can identify it by looking at three important candles. So you have your opening candle, you have the candle in the middle, and then you have your closing candle. So you're opening your candle in the middle, the imbalance candle and your closing candle. So as you can see, there is a zone in the market where there is no wick at all. There is no price being touched right here, except for the price that has gone through it. So this right here, the zone in the middle between the wick from the opening candle and the wick from the closing candle is what we call the fair value gap. Exactly like this. So how does this look like in the markets? Let's go to some quick examples. And as you can see right here, we're on Euro USD on the daily. And as you can see right here, we have our daily fair value gap, bottom of the opening candle wick to the top of the closing candle wick. This is the fair value gap. Of course, when there is a bullish fair value gap, top of the opening candle wick, but it's now on the downside, to the bottom of the closing candle wick that is now on the upside, right here. So you might ask yourself, okay, I can see this, but how do we trade this? Why do we use this? Why do we even pay attention to this? What we have often seen is that these zones tend to get retested. In theory, a Fervetti gap is a break and retest model, um, where we tend to believe that, okay, price breaks to a certain area, leaving a Fervetti gap. So it's indicating that there is a lot of movement, a lot of volume behind it, and we believe that it is going to get retested, and then after that, continuate higher. So it's basically also what happened here on this bullish Fervetti gap price came back into the Cervetti gap right here and continued higher afterwards. Then it's created now a Cervetti gap the other way around. So what do I believe right now is that we probably do something like this and then go lower from there. But that's just my theory. So then how do we know a Cervetti gap is valid? And this will work most of the time, of course, not 100% of the time, like nothing well in trading, but I'm going to show you on this chart some examples where it does work and where it doesn't work. How I determine that it is valid is I want to see the candle close that comes inside of the Fervetti gap to not close above the 50% line of the Fervetti gap. So for example right here we have a Fervetti gap and then we don't want it to close it above that middle point. So if price comes inside of this and it closes here it's okay. If it closes above we don't think it's valid anymore and we believe that price goes up afterwards. What now if price wicks inside of this area and it wicks above the 50% but it doesn't close above it? That's totally fine. So then when we look at this market structure, we have a value gap right here. And as we can see, price came in this area, it wicked above the 50% of the value gap and it went down afterwards. Then we have the same right here, price wicked above that 50% of that Fervetti gap area, even higher than that, but it did not close above it. Then again, the same right here, price waked above it, did not close above it. Then we have our downtrend, and then right here, we have our 50%, it closed above it, and what happened, price turned around. Then again, you have a Fervetti gap right here, closed above it, because it is clearly bullish, and it remained bullish afterwards. Then we have a Fervetti gap right here again. You can see that it obviously closed above it. Then we have a Fervetti gap that has not been touched right here. But then, like I said, it works 90% of the time. Uh, and sometimes, of course, it doesn't. You have your Fervetti gap right here and it closed way below it. Some reasons for this, I would say, is that one, you have your previous high right here. So there's like a breaker block zone right here. And you also have some liquidity down here with a Fervetti gap. So I could believe that price wants to go lower than this even but then of course it rallied up afterwards so how would i trade this um, of course if something like this happens i'm definitely trading the continuation of this um, if something like this happens i'm definitely trading the reversal of it and when something like this happens i wait for price to come even lower most probably um, to come inside of this area and then take a long position from here and then i would probably miss this trade um, right here so fair value gap when we don't close above 50 percent it's valid. So then what I also like to see, um, especially when we are in reversal, so like here, is that Fervetti gaps create new Fervetti gaps. And basically what this means is that there is a lot of volume going that way. Because a Fervetti gap is basically just an imbalance in a market created by volume. For example, right here, this is where the, the turnaround started, the reversal started. And as you can see, 
you have an hourly bullish fatality gap right here. Some other ones even right here too, but this was the major one with the big displacement, right? As we can see, after this fatality gap has been created, there is another fatality gap created. So a lot of volume going this way, a lot of momentum. Then we come inside of this fatality gap, we tap it and we continue it higher. Also for this downtrend, there's a fatality gap right here, a bearish fatality gap. It creates another one immediately afterwards and then basically just continues to rally down. Um, right here, we have a fatality gap. It did not create one afterwards, only here, but this is already after another move since it got tapped in already. This fatality gap right here created another one straight after. And there's also the fatality gap that has been tapped and been corrected. Um, this fatality gap created another one right here. So as you can see, this often happens. And this just indicates that there's a lot of movement in the market. Um, a lot of volume going in one way or the other. And this fatality gap created this fatality gap right here. I think it is very important to, to see fatality gaps that are created after each other. Even though this one was just to go up higher to this fatality gap right here, only daily and then go down afterwards. But that's enough. And sometimes on a lower time frame, you need momentum to go to a certain point of interest area and then have a reversal from that area, but you will still need the momentum, of course. Okay, then my next point is how to choose the right Fervetti gap. And this is something that I know is sometimes very confusing for you all, since like, for example, right here, we have two Fervetti gaps. How do we choose the right one? So what I often do is I stack my confluences. And one of my confluences is, of course, my Fibonacci tool. I will have a complete dedicated video about this to learn you more about this. Another one is the previous highs or lows. So as you can see right here, we have previous highs. There's a Vivetti gap. They've been tapped and it continues down. These previous highs and lows are often breaker blocks, are often order blocks, as you can see right here. Um, so that depends. But I just call it highs and lows since it doesn't really matter. It's just another way of saying it. So then also in this example right here, we have two Fervetti gaps, one all the way down here. We have one big one right here. What do we do? We stack the confluences. So in this case, we could take the flip from here. So you can see 6.8 area. Then we look at, okay, what is the previous high or low in this instance? As we're going upwards, we will be looking at previous highs. This is the previous high right here. So right now we have one, the Fervetti gap. That is right here. We have the 6.8 area and we have the previous high. So where will we enter? Around that area, of course. So then we will search for our entry somewhere down here. But this is how to choose the right Fervetti gap. You want to stack as many confluences around that Fervetti gap and that is the one that you will take. As you can see, this one right here does not go with a previous high, does not go with the 6.8 or 70, it goes even deeper. So in theory, it will be a better Fervetti gap to take, but because there are so many confluences up here, price will never come down there. Okay, then this could also be a good one from a high to our low, we are going to look for the Fervetti gaps. And maybe even on the four hour, we can also search for Fervetti gaps. The higher the time frame, the better the Fervetti gap or the point of interest will be. So we have a Fervetti gap right here and we have a Fervetti gap up here. Which one would be the best for us to trade? So we are going to stack confluences. And the first confluence is that the 6.8 is aligned with the Fervetti gap right here. Let us see. There are no previous highs and lows on the four hour. There are some right here. There's a previous low right here on the one hour. So this could be confluence for this Fervetti gap. And that's practically it, I would say, for this setup. So which one are we taking? Most probably I will take the lowest one. In this instance, I will take an entry from here. But of course, I want to see a reversal happening at that point of interest area. So what do I do then? I go to the 15 minutes. And this is for another video, but I will show you very, very quickly. I go to the 15 minutes. I wait for price to slow down to consolidate and then break out of that consolidation zone. As we can see, it did not do that right here, but as we can see, it did do that right here. So what would my trade be like? Most probably something like this. I would enter here and um, stops above that S. This is quite of a big move. I would try to re-enter on this Fervetti gap somewhere in the middle. And then again, stack the confluences. So it would probably be at this low right here. As you can see, we never came back and then target the lows all the way down there. So that would be the trade then on hindsight, of course. But that's very, very important. And also what I said in my last video is that always mark out your point of interest areas, but also wait for a confirmation that your point of interest area is valid. Because basically, when we're analyzing things, we're just guessing and hoping that it will reverse there. There's the biggest chance that it will reverse at that area that you're drawing on because due to your technical analysis, that is what you believe. But you also need that confirmation. You can't trust your bias so much that you marry it. So that is what happened right there. I'll give you another example right here. So we have two for value gaps. Only four hour, one right here and one right here. So what do we do? Which one do we take? Let's take the FIP first of all. 
As you can see, this is the better one according to the FIP. But then we look at previous highs and lows, which is then the better one, then it will probably be this for Vertigap. So if you have two confluences, one for the first of Vertigap, one for the second one, what do we do? We watch closely on a lower time frame and we watch what it's going to do. So if we did, we would have seen that we had a reaction right here, right away. I don't know if I can go back that far. I think I can maybe on the 15. Yeah, I can. So that's perfect. We start consolidating right here. We break out of the consolidation zone. So this could be an entry. Of course, stops above here. So this would be something like this. Quite of a big stop loss still, I would say. But this could be a very valid trade. So then you let this go. Right here, it would go at break even already. Since this is over one and a half R for me. We start consolidating here a bit. And price... It's almost TP right here. And then we turn around, we go higher as we saw from hindsight. So then we come to this area again and we do the same game. We wait for it to break out of it like this with displacement. It's also 61.8 from this area right here. So then we take a trade again. We could take a trade again from here, something like this. Then let's say we target a one over two. Then it got tapped right there. And our previous trade also got tapped. And the target was somewhere down here. Then let's see if we are coming back again or are we looking at another fair value gap. Let's see, we have an hourly fair value gap right here and we have an hourly fair value gap right here. As we can see, this one had the confluence of this previous low. This one had the 61.8. So again, two points for two confluences. So then we look at the first one. Are we coming out of the zone, yes or no? We are coming out of it with quite some displacement. Is there an entry somewhere? Maybe on the five minute for value gap right here where you could enter here somewhere. It doesn't really matter if there was or if there was not. Um, but as you can see, we come down afterwards to take out the trade again. So always check your confluences. And if you have a confluence for both of them, really watch, or not even if you have a confluence for both of them, always, always wait for displacement the other way around. Always wait for confirmation of your zone. And if you have two zones, watch closely on the lowest one, since this is the first one to be hit. If there is not a good reaction off there, then watch the second one. If there is a good correction off there, you get stopped out. You can still go to the second one. And then if there is no reaction, you will probably close above the 50% and turn around. So then there's a little trick I would say that I use lately on the one hour. And that is the one hour for value gap. I use one hour for value gaps to determine a bit of my daily bias. So often, as soon as there is a bullish for value gap, you will also turn bullish not a long while afterwards and vice versa. If there's a bearish for value gap, you will also turn bearish afterwards. But it is only at the beginning of moves most of the time. So let's see here, for example, this is a very big consolidation zone. We are on the one hour right now. And let's search for a bearish or a bullish for value gap. So we have some bullish right here and we continue higher bullish afterwards. So the bullish right here, continue higher afterwards. Then we have no bearish ones. We have one bullish right here. We do go up a little bit, but then as soon as we have a bearish of gap, we dump afterwards. And then we have a very big bearish of gap right here, which makes us go the move lower. Then of course, to create the pullback, you will have some bullish for value gaps, but these were the ones to be formed first after that drop out of this consolidation zone. And also most probably aligned with daily bias. I just lost where I was, but that is something to always keep in mind to stack your confluences again. So then let's see another example. We were bearish right here, bearish, bearish, bearish. As you can see, as soon as we make a bullish Ravelli gap right here, we turn around. We go higher and higher and higher and higher. Then, yeah, of course, this is very obvious that we turn around right here. Then right here, we have a bullish Ravelli gap. We had, we had one already right here. We stop this out even lower and then we have again some bullish Ravelli gaps and we turn higher afterwards. I would say keep in mind the rule that I gave you earlier that if a Favetti gap creates a new one right after or a couple of candles afterwards, it is a very, very strong one. And, and that could very good indicate the turnaround of a move. Then right here, we have a Favetti gap. And right here, we have two Favetti gaps after each other. And we just dump downwards and continue to go down. Then we have a Favetti gap right here. And we have a very big move afterwards. Then again, some bearish Favetti gaps right here. And we have a big move afterwards to the downside. So it is something to keep in mind. I would say don't sell yourself too blindly on it but it is a very good extra confluence to have to get your momentum the right way and to see that okay my daily bias is bullish and i also have some bullish momentum behind me right now i think this is the perfect place to execute my trades also right here two bullish for gaps after each other and um, of course after that we created a very big upwards move i hope this was clear for you guys i think for gaps are pretty easy but very very crucial to use and if you use them correctly, they can make you a lot of money. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a thing or two. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye, guys.